Let's, Are you ready for rapid fire? I will. Let's yes. do it. Some great questions tonight, but let's hit some rapid fire questions tonight too. And of course, if we you know missed anything that was pressing for you tonight, you can also always hit us up with it on tomorrow's show. We'll have plenty on tomorrow's show as well. So Tobias Merriweather, we talked about a little bit about him earlier. He saw the field again Saturday night, but he didn't have a catch. Here's my question for you. Oh, boy. Which number at the end of the season is going to be greater? Tobias Merriweather's total receptions or Chris Tyree's total touchdowns? So I meant to look this up. I'm guessing Chris Tyree does not have a touchdown yet. I can't remember him two. getting any. He has any two. Touchdown. One has rushing, two. one receiving. Yep. So he's got a 2 nothing lead, but that's not uh, much, you know, if a receiver gets a couple oh, of catches. That's a series, potentially, right? I mean, I'll be Mr. Optimistic, and I'll say Tobias Merriweather's total receptions, but I will also say that I'm not super confident that that is going to be the answer when it's all said and done. But the way the last couple of games have gone, the way I think this game is going to go, I feel like he's going to get his hands on the ball over the next few games, and I think he does take the lead, and I think he'll keep it for the rest of the season, unless Chris Tyree just goes bonkers, but I don't right. see that happening. Either. Right. It's bound to start happening. Right. You know, if he sees the field more, he's going to start picking up a catch here, a catch there. And there right. are what we're five games into the season now. So that's seven games remaining of the regular season and a bowl game, you know, eight, uh, you know, right there. If he can just average game. one per game, that's, that's eight. I, you know, so I think he's got an opportunity to, I to have so. around 10. Now he's got to get targeted at some point first, but just the fact that he's seeing the field is yeah. at least promising. Yeah. I don't think Tyree probably ends up with 10 or 11 touchdowns. So I'll say Merriweather gets his number is going to be greater as well. I like it. I like it. I'm with you. Another question about receivers for you here. Okay. Fill in the blank. It's blank that Jason Garrett said during the Notre Dame BYU broadcast Saturday that Lorenzo Styles is basically a possession receiver right now. It's understandable that he would say that because I don't know that Jason Garrett really studies Notre Dame as well as he probably should. And I, I guess that's a knock on Jason Garrett, but it's also what he sees on Saturdays. And if you're just going by what you see on Saturday, you can easily make that assumption or that opinion. And I get it. That's not who he should be. That That, that is not who he should be, but it is kind of who he is at the moment. And so it's understandable that he would say that, but I don't think that over the course of his career that you would say that once it's all said and done. Yeah, and it remains, after the other night, it remains just four different Notre Dame receivers who have a catch. And I know Brian's given us a hard time about Tobias Merriweather, but the guy's talented and the receiving core has not produced so far. Four receivers have re receptions so far. Styles is averaging... 13.7 per catch. Braden Lindsay, 9.8 per catch. Uh, Jaden Thomas is the leader, 17.7 per catch. Matt Salerno, 14 per catch. So really, with the exception of Thomas, you know, when you look at the yards per catch and going into that game, you would have said he was in the same boat. I mean, they're not throwing deep, you know, like there's one deep pass that we have seen, you know, catch by Lorenzo Styles, the post that we didn't get to see on TV against North Carolina and the Jaden Thomas 30 yard touchdown last week. So until they start stretching the field, everyone is working as a possession receiver, right? I'm saying they haven't that's used the wide receivers at all. Yeah. That's not the skill set of most of these guys, but when you look at the production and the yards per catch that they have right now, it's right. They've got to start stretching the field. And like, especially, you know, you, I, I just, I, you know, like these game plans and, you know, go back a few weeks back. I can't remember exactly when Marcus Freeman, I think, I think my, it might've been after Cal, he was asked about the game plan and he's like, this is going to be a week to week thing. You know, like you're going to see different game plans and we have seen distinctly yeah. different game plans week to week. They know that the receivers are part of the passing game, even though they really weren't against BYU the other night. But at some point, that has to tell me that like more of those Jaden Thomas type opportunities are going to start coming because defenses are, are, are sitting down, you know, looking for that short stuff and, you know, in, in the yeah. flats and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. They, they, if anybody's going to be anything but a possession receiver, they need to start throwing to the wide receivers more often. He, you know, Drew Pine, that's the next step that I need to see from Drew Pine, right? If we're talking about 
progression and we're talking about getting better. The next progression for Drew Pine is to find his open receivers and hit those guys and not stay locked in on Michael Mayer. Yeah. Okay. Notre Dame is favored by 16 and a half over Stanford Saturday. Purdue's a 13 and a half point favorite to beat Nebraska. And Texas is a 16 and a half point favorite to beat Iowa State. So which of those three double-digit underdogs do you like best against the spread Saturday? It's a toss-up for me between Iowa State and Stanford. And the only reason I say Stanford is because no, we, we've talked about this. I'm not going to rehash it, that Notre Dame hasn't really put teams away. And we're talking yeah. about more than a two-touchdown spread. And... They should win by that much. I just don't know that they will. And since I'm pretty intimately familiar with Notre Dame and what they have and have not done, <laughs> I'm going to go with Stanford on this one. And I'm going to say I'm going to take Stanford and the points on this particular question. See, we are not Marshall misunderstood the question. The question is not who covers the spread. The question is which of the underdogs right. covers the spread in Iowa State. Uh, Stanford and Nebraska are the three underdogs in this scenario. So it's one of those three, which of those three has the best chance and Shannon and John have the correct answer in my book. I think it's Iowa state because okay. they're now this is the best chance, you know, and I, I, I can see what you're saying with yeah, Stanford. I, you're, you know, you're worried about, you know, the Notre Dame factor <laughs> and all that different stuff. I get it. I, again, Iowa state's a little bit like, actual Iowa you know the two Iowa teams are fairly similar this year their offense isn't as bad as Iowa's but you know it's not great but they also don't give up a lot of points like I mentioned earlier they lost a 10 to 9 game to Kansas State last week it's and the week before that they lost a 14 to 11 game to Kansas you know so right. at the very least very Iowa like they know how to keep the points down and you know Texas you know, got a little swagger. They're on a little bit of a roll. They beat West Virginia a couple of weeks ago. And then, of course, they just put the hammer down on Oklahoma with 49 points last week. But this is a letdown opportunity for Texas because you're just coming off Red River. It's yeah. 149 to nothing against Oklahoma. Next week, they've got Oklahoma State. And so right in the middle. It's a trap game. Trap game, Iowa State. Trap game. That's right. So it's, it's a classic letdown. I like the Cyclones to keep this close. And really, you know, like, I kind of wonder about that Purdue-Nebraska game as well because Purdue's got some momentum going, you know, three straight wins and all sure, that. But sure. they've played four one-possession games this season. And, you know, the win for Purdue, you know, they beat Minnesota by 10 points. So, you know, they've played a lot of really close games this year. Don't really full know, fully know what to make of Nebraska, but they've scored at least – 28 points four different times themselves. So I think that maybe that game is a little bit closer. Like like putting a lot on on Purdue to win a double digit yeah. spread game. I don't know if I'd be comfortable with that room really either. All right, I was just looking over here to see if anyone was was chiming in with anything. Yeah, Tyler Evans, he thought Purdue as well. Yeah. Okay, so Vince, I want you to help me figure <laughs> this out. I'll try. You and I were texting about this. I was telling Brian about this earlier. So this reporter from the Lawrence Journal World tweeted yesterday that Kansas quarterback Jalen Daniels is expected to miss the rest of the season with a grade three separation of his right shoulder, his throwing shoulder. Injured it in the loss to TCU in the first half. Similar, similar injury to Tyler, Tyler Buckner. Buckner. Right. Not so fast, my friend, because – Jalen Daniels, the actual quarterback, sees this tweet and he quote tweets, sheesh, that's news to me. <laughs> so you've got the quarterback, you've got the reporter saying he's going to be out the rest of the season. You've got the quarterback saying, uh, not so fast, my friend. And then, so this was yesterday, last night, Kansas head coach Lance Leopold tweets two pictures of Daniels. And in one of them, he's like flexing his muscles, you know, and the other one, he's raising his arms above his head so it's like if he's doing this stuff how bad is the shoulder right? right so you've got the reporter saying it's season ending and so then 
In an ESPN article, Leopold is quoted saying, Jalen did not practice today, would probably be put in the doubtful area. Again, looking at it day to day, but hasn't done anything yet, and that's probably the extent I will comment at this time. What do you think I should make of all this as a Kansas alum? First of all, based on what we have to do as media at Notre Dame in order to report anything, you got to get permission. You don't have to, but it's understood, especially for injuries. You know, and you got this rogue guy saying he's out for the season. And then the way Kansas handles it is the kids tweeting about it. Like, I think it's hilarious, frankly, that the, he's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. You know, news to me. I think that is priceless. That is hilarious. Why would you not get confirmation from the sports information department before you go tell saying that a kid is done for the year? It's pathetic. Well, and that's, you know, like Brian and I were having conversations about, you know, injuries and reporting of injuries. And, and obviously, you know, every place is a little bit different with with how they want sure. to handle that, you know, especially in college. But this guy said he had his sources, you know, and then, you know, like I, I just put the thing up there. We are not Marshall said both of those pictures are photoshopped. You know, it's like <laughs> I, on the one hand. What are what are especially college football coaches notorious for? Lying. Smoke screening and <laughs> yes, that's right. That's exactly right. Lying uh, about the extent of injuries. Right, right, right. So how much stock I can put in what you know Lance Leopold is saying about this and you know what everyone else is saying. At the very least, you know, he wasn't wearing a sling. You would think yeah. that if his shoulder was that bad, he would have been a sling and he would not be holding it up over right. his arm. Right. You know, could they be Photoshop? I, I suppose that's a lot of work to do for a football coach, though, to Photoshop pictures of, of the I, quarterback. I will bet you even money that the guy doesn't even understand how to do Photoshop. No, but I'm sure he has a staff of people that can. I'm just hoping maybe within a month he's back. In the meantime, you know, they got a pretty good backup quarterback, you know, that played well in the second half against TCU. I'm, I'm hoping they can ride that right. for a little bit because I think it was. I think it was uh, Salty asking earlier, and we didn't get to the question, who's going to have the better season, Kansas football or Kansas basketball? I got to go with Kansas basketball because it's Kansas basketball and they just won a national championship. And true. the schedule's getting tougher now for football. You know, they won yeah. some, yeah. they opened some eyes with some nice non-conference wins. You know, they played a close game against TCU. A couple mistakes kind of buried them in the end, but it's getting closer, and and Vigo wants to know if I bet on horse racing like Kramer. I do not. They're all talking about my gambling here, and uh, <laughs> Shannon says that. Uh, Ooh, a non Notre Dame question. Oh, but there was another Shannon question. I'll get to that one here. Oh, okay. In a minute. Where was the? Oh, yeah. I have a feeling Sean has Iowa State in a parlay this weekend, is what Shannon said, and I yeah. could be working on one right now. I could be. <laughs> I could be. It's tough, man, because I, you know, like you were saying last week, I went out on some underdogs and it didn't pay off. Yeah. But those spreads were closer too. I like these yeah. wide spreads like this. Yeah. You can have some like fun with those. Spreads. So what's more likely to happen in the next 20 years, Vince? Cubs win another World Series or the Bears return to glory and win the Super Bowl? Uh, I have way more faith in the and this is saying a lot over the last year or so, but I have a lot more faith in the management of the Cubs than I do of the management of the Bears. Slightly. I, yes, and I realize that's not setting the bar very high, but the last time the Bears won the, the Super Bowl, I was four, and the last time the Cubs won the World Series I was 35. So, I mean, there's a big difference there, and I do feel like the Cubs have a better shot than the Bears do. I think so too, because you look at, I mean, 20 years is a long time. I mean, the cycles, you know, things change sure. every three to five years. But when you look at really how competitive the Bears have been compared to how competitive the Cubs have been, it's like they uh, backed into that Super Bowl that they played in. I mean, yeah, yeah. I think that I'd, I'd have to put mine, I'd have to put mine on the Cubs as well. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, we'll see what happens. I think part of that has to do with the division. I mean, there's a lot of scenarios and things that go into it. But, yeah, I just have way more faith in the Cubs than I do the Bears. Yeah. All right. 
the Pac-12 is trying to negotiate a new TV contract, and you've got outlets like ESPN, TNT, streamers like Apple and Amazon, all reportedly interested at different levels with the Pac-12. So if you're the Pac-12, how much do you prioritize just getting the biggest paycheck versus potential, you know, exposure or lack of exposure that you would get with, you know, this kind of mixed yeah. bag of, of outlets involved? I, I would try to get as many outlets involved as possible, to be honest with you, because you just don't know what the future holds with streaming and everything. I mean, I, it, it does feel like things are pointing in that direction, but I they need exposure right now because I think – it just feels like it's going to be the Pac-12 or the Big 12. Like it's, I don't know that it's going to be both moving forward. Yeah. And I feel like the Pac-12 is kind of on the outside looking in when it comes to exposure because all the games are on so freaking late, right? And so it, they're going to have to get some better exposure if they expect to last. And I don't know, you know, I don't know what the future holds for both of those conferences, but I feel like they're going to feed off of each other and maybe combine into one. And so they're going to need as much exposure as they can get. And I really, you know, there was talk about that merger and all that stuff. I really do think whether it's a merger, like they would be pretty well suited to play a lot of games against each other, you sure. know, with different exposure, you know, non-conference games and stuff like that. But, you know, you know, Vigo was saying college football is dead uh, on uh, on most of the West Coast. Oh, and it's that. not a lie, especially when you've well, got the two teams leaving UCLA. From a recruiting standpoint, I don't think it's dead. I mean – you could say that it is down based on because most of those Pac-12 teams recruit the West Coast and they're down. And so I see where Vigo is coming from, uh, but it, I wouldn't say dead. I think that's yeah. a bit hyperbolic. I think if you're the Pac-12, it's a must to have ESPN, like yeah. for the exposure side of things. You Because of what you were – the recruiting aspect, you've got to have games – on outlets that people are because like even if even if it's ESPN like the Big 12 right now for example you know they have some games that end up on ESPN you know so they've got a contract with them but they also like ESPN plus is still a big thing you know because like my dad lives in Kansas and you know all, all the time I you know I hear about you know ESPN plus and you know they've got to watch these games on ESPN plus and stuff like that so that's a part you know like it's it's tougher for the older crowd but even like for the younger crowd espn plus that's not a big deal you know like at least you've got access and the games are on some espn outlet you know like if espn plus is part of the deal which it would be if you've got a espn contract and then the streamers i'm sure would pay a lot of money but i just don't think it's in your best interest yeah. to make that your main package you know no, whether it's apple or amazon package. or whatever because again, you've got to have games on actual TV. Because, like, you know, just think about the other day when we were off and we're watching games all day. Saturday, like, the biggest downside to the streaming thing, you know, like the Bears are on TV tomorrow night, the Thursday night game. It's on right. Amazon, right? We only have one TV in our house that we can watch Amazon. So if you want to watch Amazon, it's got to be on that channel. And you also can't flip around that's to true. watch other stuff, you know, like, and, and that's, to be quite honest, especially if it's if it's like a Saturday or Sunday, I'm flipping around all the time. As soon as a commercial comes on, I'm seeing what's going on in the other game. You've you know? always been a surfer, man. You you are <laughs> that's, right. that's always been you, man. I'm a professional surfer. <laughs> you are. You really are. It's impressive, actually. <laughs> all right. We talked about Justin Tucker, the Baltimore Ravens kicker, earlier this week. He kicks field goals so well. That's right. He kicks field goals so well. If the uprights we're only a half yard wide, he would still make a high percentage of his kicks. He has the best rate of right down the middle kicks of any kicker in the NFL. So here's my question to you. Buy or sell the idea of putting an extra upright bar in the middle of the goalposts, and if the kicker hits that bar with the ball, you get four points instead of three. Let me ask you a question before okay. I answer this. Okay. Is this a Sean Steyer's original, or did you see this from somewhere? Completely me completely me because I, I saw there were these there were these and i've got a, a screenshot of the whole you know his accuracy and right down the middle and all that stuff and okay. i'm like well if he's right down the middle and he can kick it through a half yard you know set of uprights in the middle what if you just put one more bar right in the middle yeah. and you've got your four point bar there i freaking love it 
I will say that. I freaking love it. I mean, first of all, you know I have a pension for kickers. There, That is obvious. But at the same time, basketball, you get more points if you're shooting from further away. Three-pointer, right? You should be awarded if you're kicking it right down the middle. Yeah. I, I think I think it's a great idea. I really and I do. Think, and I wonder, you know, because, you know, like, like when you think it like, I don't know if you've ever like been out at the range shooting and stuff like that. It's like sure, sure. the, you know, the narrower, you know, like the smaller you focus on, you know, like if like, for example, look at your computer screen, right? Well, if I'm like 50 yards away and all I'm doing is going, oh, I'm going to try to hit that screen. Maybe you hit it somewhere, but you might also spray it off, you know, and, and not hit the screen at all. But if you aim dead center, you've got a better chance of hitting the screen. Right, right someplace just like with the field you know like so i wonder like if you've got this bar in the middle and kickers were you know focusing actually on the middle hey. if maybe the accuracy of some of these guys starts improving well and i, and I antoine says ain't nobody gonna go for four points when they can barely get three it's not going for four it says you get four right right down the middle you're right. not you still it. like if it still goes through the main right. uprights you get three yeah. points but right. if it hits that middle bar you get four yeah, no, I I complete I I'm with you. I think that's a that's a great incentive to kick it right down the middle. And I'm gonna push back on we are not Marshall right here. He's like I would like Groupie to focus on PAT. He hasn't graduated to field goals yet. He's missed one. He's missed one field goal. Am I wrong? He hasn't missed a PAT. I think you're right. I so think why, you're right. Why are we banging on the kid? Why are we banging on Groupie? <laughs> He's missed one field goal all season. Salty's on board. He says uh, four pointer would be dope. Allen says, "What would happen? That's oh, good. If he hits the pole and it comes back out. Well, you know, it's going to come back out most likely if you hit the pole. Yeah, no, the whole the thing pole. is like you put like some kind of you know sensor on the pole so you know for sure that it hit the pole. And if, then if you hit the pole, it's just four points. Yeah, whether I mean, it comes it back comes out or not, out, it doesn't matter because that would have right. gone. It has to go in between the big ones, right? And if it hits the one in the middle and comes back out, it's obviously going between the middle ones. So that's a four-pointer. Yeah. It's a huge – I'm telling you, man, that would change strategy. That would – I mean, that would be awesome. I've got to – you know, I guess I've got to pursue this now. I've got to start, you know, sending this up the right flagpoles. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. I Kickers unite. I need to write Justin Tucker. And yes. maybe Justin Tucker can push this incentive, right? Yes, the $20 million <laughs> man. He can do it for you. There you go. All right, we've got a couple NFL questions, and we actually had – I want to make sure that I get this from Tyler because he sent in a super chat a while ago, and we've been kind of sitting on it. During the Chiefs-Raiders game, we saw Mahomes lined up in the shotgun, Kelsey went in motion, lined up as the quarterback, and snapped the ball. Someone tell Reese to use this play with baby Gronk. I... Michael Mayer is a very good tight end. They tried him on the old end around, you know, before. He's not exactly fleet of foot, all right? That is the only place where the kid from Georgia is better than Michael Mayer, Right. okay? I still think Michael Mayer is a better tight end overall, but the Bowers kid is faster. And frankly, I would almost imagine that Travis Kelsey is faster as well. So yeah, that's, that's one thing that's – because, like, I was watching Kelsey the other night and thinking about – you know, just watching Michael Mayer, obviously, a couple nights before. Kelsey, you know, even though he's obviously big, he does have more quick twitch to him yeah. than Michael Mayer has. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. So, yeah, I I don't know that I would subscribe to that. Now, I would subscribe to some other things and moving guys around and things of that nature, but not putting Michael Mayer behind center. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, fill in the blank. It's blank that Raiders wide receiver Devontae Adams has now been formally charged with misdemeanor assault for shoving the cameraman after the Raiders lost to the Chiefs Monday night. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely – the guy's 28 years old. He steps in front of a, a train, essentially. Like, first of all, what are you doing? Okay. He got a minor concussion, and he says he got whiplash. He says he's got whiplash. Right. Come on, dude. You got whiplash? This I'm is like, you know, you're out. sitting at the stoplight and the guy taps your bumper with his car. Oh, and it's like, oh, I've got whiplash. He comes in yeah. with the big neck brace, you know, the whole thing. I mean, this is, this kid's, a, whoever this guy's attorney is, is a freaking ambulance chaser. It's ridiculous. 
I realize he's probably going to set a lot of court and the guy's going to have a payday. Well, see, that's the thing now is like, you know, this is just like regular court. What happens when well, he, he, when he takes it. it to civil and he There's decides that, to yeah. sue him, you There's know, because that. that's what he's doing with this whiplash BS. Is he's going to try to claim pain and suffering down the line and, you know, so stupid. All that I, kind of I stuff. Just can't, I, mean, I just can't stand people that do this i can't stand it and i i realize he's trying to get a payday and he wants money and all of that but it's just stupid stupid yeah we were you know we were talking about it yesterday and again like did Devonte adams did he go too far with the shove yeah sure. but the guy was also an idiot you know like they showed the video and the guy yeah. decides he's there's two raiders players coming to the tunnel and he decides he needs to run across that space while they're right there and that's how adams runs into him it's like come on man it, like, what are you doing the fact that he's filed charges and it's yeah he's just he's setting the whole thing up for to try to get the payday down the line so so stupid yes all right well i think that's going to do it for tonight a lot of spirit as always on mailbag night which we yeah. appreciate yes we do Yes, we do. We appreciate it. I'm intrigued it. about this live Saturday show. This is the first that I've heard about it. So. I have been texting Brian, and so I do know what the surprise is. And so I will let you know once we sign off. Sorry, everybody, but it is a surprise. All right. And you're just going to have to wait until – actually, I mean, the goal is to have as many people on campus live as possible. So people need to head out to campus, and they need to check it out. And uh, I promise you – you will not be disappointed. How about that? You will not be disappointed. Antoine knows where it's at. His neck and his back. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. So you won't be disappointed. Yep. Live so show have, coming up. Uh, so whoever All the right. poster was that was looking for where the live show was, it's going to be around the dome at some point. And you'll have to follow Brian on Twitter or join the message board to get more details. But uh, it, it it will be worth your time, and it will be a memorable moment for you and your son. Yeah, and I think that I think the guy Alan just brought this up, the protester yeah. in the Rams game, Bobby Douglas, tackled last week. I think he's trying to say that he has yeah. a minor concussion or something too. So you know how many concussions you it's and like, I? Have great, don't run on a football field right. and you won't get a concussion. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. Yeah, man, don't run in front of professional football players and you won't get concussed and whiplash. Gosh. <laughs> It's just, it's just so typical. It's just so typical and so sad. Yeah. All right. We will talk to you tomorrow night. We will be here once again, as always. Great stuff. Appreciate all the questions tonight. We'll talk to you then. Ivy Nation Sports Talk.